G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video I'm going to give you 50, not 5, 50 food crops that we are growing right now. So that's a lot, I better get into it if I'm going to fit it all in. Let's get into it. Garlic. This is a Glen Large variety, and this season I decided to grow them in these round raised garden beds. Going really well. And if you eat a lot of garlic, like me, and you're worried about garlic breath, which I'm not, but you might be, eat an onion. That'll get rid of the garlic smell for sure. Marsh grapefruit. A good mild grapefruit taste. One of the best grapefruits you'd ever want to eat or grow. A very heavy cropper and in my opinion a taste bud stopper. This is a ripper. Jerusalem fartichoke. I mean artichoke. It has that nickname because for some people it can produce quite a bit of wind but it produces fantastic flowers. It's a beautiful crop to grow in the garden but also when it dies back like it has now in winter it has these wonderful tubers and I thoroughly recommend eating it. It can be heaps of fun for the whole family. Pumpkin. The whole back of our vegetable garden is starting to get overtaken, well it is overtaken, by a pumpkin vine, a Kent variety, that I started in July last year. Yes, it's been growing for nearly 12 months and it's not stopping. I'm even running it over in my lawnmower now because it's starting to take over the whole backyard. We're getting so many pumpkins that I think if I eat any more, we're all going to turn into a pumpkin. Ah, the Valencia orange. I love the name, but it's not just the name that I love. Look at how much fruit this thing is producing. And not only that, the Valencia orange is the one orange that stays on the tree for the longest out of all the orange varieties. And why not grow a seedless Valencia? No seeds would surely have to be better than seeds, wouldn't it? This is only a young tree, but it's doing well and it's already got about 10 fruit on it. Like my new hairstyle, this is my regrowth, new technology. I can transplant that straight in the old noggin. Nah, only joking. Seriously, these are onion seedlings. I grow them in a big lot like this and then I plant them out. And that's what I've done here. One, two, three, four, five rows, 25, about to 20 in each row. Over a hundred seedlings. You can't see them very well from there, but those seedlings in another month or two will turn into large onions and in summer we'll be able to harvest them. I'm going to be interested to see how these different onions grow in contrast to each other and of course how these different varieties taste. Pepper, grown on this structure and also protected by this netting because the possums love eating the leaves for some reason. But finally this plant is flowering and producing pepper berries, standard table pepper. So I'm looking forward to letting these fellas develop, picking them, drying them and having our very own table pepper. Lettuce, what would a food garden be without lettuce? And this time of year, lettuce grows like crazy. We've got all these different varieties growing at the moment, a mixed type. We've even got lettuce coming up again in the lawn and around garden beds. That's how good it grows at this time of year here. Rio red grapefruit, much younger and obviously smaller than the marsh here, but look at all the fruit on it. It's called Rio red because it's red. Tastes a little more tart than the marsh, but hey, I don't mind tarts. Tomatoes. These are a Roma variety that I've got to start staking now that they're getting on a little bit and starting to flower. But over here, we have this well-advanced cherry type tomato that is absolutely sensational. Check them out. They look great and they taste wonderful. Mm. The reason why it's so advanced is it's self-seeded and I just let it grow. It came up early and now we've got early tomatoes. The yellow dragon fruit, one of my favourite varieties. Yes, it has spines, but they're pretty easy to remove and this, in my opinion, 
is the best tasting and sweetest dragon fruit there is. Did someone say mojitos? Look at all this fresh mint. Oh, big, fat, juicy leaves. I can feel the cocktail shaker coming on. Imperial Mandarin. Look at it. This thing never stops. Oh, and you know what else I love about these types of mandarins? They don't really taste fantastic, but look how easy it is to peel. A little bit, uh, a little bit of citrus juice in the old eyeball. It's always funny. And uh, if I've got a twitch for the rest of this video, I'm not going to be happy. Mmm. Mmm. Absolutely gorgeous. Strawberries. Growing them in half barrels this year. These were started by runners that I actually purchased. So I've got high expectations that they're going to do very well. We have a few flowering already, so it won't be long before we get a small harvest and a taste of what they're like. Dwarf snow peas, and they're already flowering. They're only six inches high. How cute is that? I expect these fellas won't get much higher than a few feet, if that. Hence the tiny trellis for it to climb up. So cute. Tamarello, or tree tomato. It's actually a relation of the tomato. Look at these big leaves. They look like standard tomato leaves, only huger. They're prone to a bit of water logging, not doing its best. Next time, I'm gonna try growing them in containers, and I think that would work much better than down here in the orchard. And if you're ever late to the party, bring along a Lane's Late Navel. What a top orange. It's never usually that late, but it will ripen a little later than other oranges. I'm growing coriander and a few more strawberries here also, but coriander along this windowsill type box. Coriander actually grows well in containers and often it will just come up in the garden, but this time I wanted to containerize it. This here is a coffee tree. Magnificent red berries. You pick the right berries, you then ferment them, dry them, and of course, roast and grind them to make coffee. But I'm thinking, if we're not gonna ever make enough to have a regular coffee or a brew, perhaps we can use it in other things like making cakes or a topping for something, or maybe the odd boutique brew, I don't know. Asparagus and ginger. Yes, I know they're two together, but I'm counting them as one. Don't count the pumpkin vine or the weeds for now. But I just wanted to show you this. I hope I don't step on a snake going through this pumpkin vine. But look at this ginger here. They're both on the way out. The asparagus is going to die off soon because of our winter. And so is the ginger. But I just love how this ginger has cemented itself. Come on, baby. In with this asparagus. I was surprised they grew so well together. I wanted to show you it. And the asparagus kind of gave the ginger a little bit of shelter towards the end as it's starting to cool down. That's why it's still actually growing. But time to pull it up, eat some, and then plant some more next season. Oh, if only you could smell this. Hokey crikey. A honey murcot. Called that because it's sweet as honey. They're unfortunately frustrating to try to peel by hand, but the taste makes up for it. Pigeon pea, can you see me? <laughs> Look at all this, these yellow flowered large shrubs here at the front of our garden, they're all pigeon pea and they produce pea-like pods. You can eat them green, just like a regular pea. See that? Or you can let them dry and make them into a dal, make them into a flower. Yeah, you can use them for lots of different things. You can cut them back once they finish flowering and use that as a mulch or a fodder for animals and really hardy and easy to grow in most soils. Likes full sun, but I've grown all this from one plant, just collected the seeds, spread them around willy nilly, and now I've got heaps of them growing in this particular part of our garden. 
I'm looking forward to harvesting a whole lot so that I can make those dulls and other things. Galangal. After growing this in our veggie garden and realizing it gets mega big real quick, I've decided to dig it out and spread it around our property rather than have it all in one big clump. And it's working out really well. Fantastic ingredient in Thai cooking. Tahitian lime. This is a massive tree, but that's not the only thing that's massive about it. The cropping is absolutely massive. This tree crops all year round and probably four or 500 fruit a year. We simply can't keep up with it. I've tried pickling it, giving them away, eating them, juicing them. And even with all that, we still have to compost some, unfortunately. But that's just the way it is. It's such a great cropper. Mm really nice in cocktails also, and maybe even a Corona, if you're that way inclined. Corn, not something we usually grow through the coldest time of year, but this Aztec corn, it's a red variety, is growing right out of the cob. Seriously, it is right out of the cob, and it's an experiment that I'm doing, and I love experiments, you know that. So I'm just gonna see how this grows in a clump, and whether or not we can get some corn off it, through the coldest part of the year. Mustard, this is a ruby streaks variety and I've got it growing there, <laughs> to be honest with you, to try to keep the weeds down. Grows like a weed, but it actually is pretty good. Mm. The seeds can get really potent, but if you're eating it as a salad, gee, actually that's quite hot. <laughs> Normally it's fairly, whoa. That's wasabi. Well, it's not, but it's got a really wasabi hit. That's not bad. Let's try it with some sushi. The famous Washington orange. We've had this tree for a long time, probably a good 10 years minimum, maybe longer, maybe, maybe 15 since we've been here. One of the first trees we planted. This is an early cropper. So these are ripe already and we're just sort of into the season. So it's good because it gives you that vitamin C hit straight away at the start of winter here. And it's seedless. What a ripper. The taste on this is probably the best out of all the oranges just to eat straight. Mm, I could suck on that all day, I tell ya. Bananas. We've got three bunches ripening right now, including one above me. And I've also planted a bunch of new bananas, a blue variety and a red variety. Yes, that's right. You can get blue and red bananas. It's enough to drive you bananas. Tiny sugar loaf cabbages. I've lined all around the outside here of this garden bed with that variety. I love it because it's like a cone shaped and it gets huge so these won't be little for very long grow them from seed and within about eight weeks you're looking at close to harvesting you can harvest them young you can let them grow on until they're nice and big make sauerkraut do so many things preserve them they last a long time in the crisper cabbage love it pineapples if anyone ever says i got the rough end of a pineapple say that's a good thing because you can plant that anywhere in your garden, part shade, full sun, and it'll grow into a new one. Basil, but not just any basil. This is the almighty Thai basil. You can keep cutting it back and it comes back with vengeance. Great in all sorts of cooking and it grows all year round when say traditional Italian basil might not. My, 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 how I love this Maya lemon tree. It's actually a cross between an orange and a lemon, but it's more lemon than orange, if you know what I mean. It just produces really huge lemons and they are delish. I'm thinking of making some lemoncello this year. We've got so many, you've got to do something with it. Red dragon fruit. This trellis is a bit of a monstrosity and we have one here that's ripe. Oh no, I've just ripped a whole branch off. Don't be concerned. 
because this can turn into another plant very quickly. It's a cutting and rather than growing them from seed, which you can do, but I wouldn't recommend, this is the best way to grow them. Stick that in the pot and you'll have a dragon fruit fruiting in 12 months. Anyway, let's have a look at this little baby. I like them put in the fridge and eaten chilled. They're also great whipped up into a cocktail, like a smoothie. Chilies or hot peppers. Usually they grow best through the warmer months, but we've still got a few like this beautiful Brazilian chili. It's like a jalapeno, very similar in shape and also taste, but it grows actually a bit better than them in our garden. And then you've got this habanero. I mean, I'm camouflaged behind it here, but just check out all the red fruit all over it. I can't wait to make a beautiful hot sauce out of this fella. You know the old saying, you can't get blood out of a stone? Well, this here is a blood orange. And, well, you can't get blood out of an orange either, I'm afraid. Let's see if this is red on the inside like it's supposed to be. This tree's got a bit of sooty mold on it, and uh, that's just because it's shaded out a little bit. We can clean that up with some organic spray. That's not a big drama, but it's still producing plenty of fruit. There you go, does that look red to you? A blood orange should be fairly red. Mmm, tastes beautiful, but it's not red. I don't know why that is. Someone can tell me in the comment section. Now this Egyptian spinach here, that has come to the end, gone to seed, but underneath it, we grew some sweet potato, just a few tubers I actually chucked in here. And let's see how they've gone. You can see it growing over the edge of this garden bed. I can cut bits of this back and replant it into the garden. Sweet potato grows all year round here. And let's gingerly pull this out. Take that off. A few tubers turned into quite the nice these were just small tubers. I actually got them from the shop. Oh, I just broke that one off. They're a purpley red orange flesh type variety. There you go, just there. We've got plenty more. And that'll do for Din Din's tonight. <laughs> Amazing. This is a good size too. Kaffir lime. Some people don't like the name or the fruit. And you shouldn't because the fruit isn't meant to be eaten. You're supposed to eat the rind or the skin of the fruit and also these beautiful fragrant leaves, like a herb or a spice in Asian cooking. What you're looking at here is a red bisexual pawpaw. Nothing wrong with that, except it's getting too tall. Plus, the older they get, they don't produce as well. It's been good to grow it in the garden and test it out, but I think it'd be best if we replaced it with something else that we love eating, like, say, bananas. You know I like to say, hail the kale, and it's for good reason. Even if you don't like kale, kale is so full of antioxidants and good for you, you should just eat it. I don't care how you do it. Juice it, hide it in potatoes, hide it somehow, whatever. Just grow it. It goes for a long time in the garden, has a long season, and it is really good for you. And it can be eaten in various different ways, even kale chips. And finally, the turmeric's dying back, which means I can not only walk all over it, but you can start harvesting it. Just look at this gorgeous stuff. Oh, so high in antioxidants. Look at it on the inside. Oh, wow. Yes, I know people say, Mark, I hate the way you pronounce turmeric. That's just the way I say it. Turmeric or something like that. Turmeric. This tall, upright grower is called a sunrise lime. I think that's because eating its fruit is like watching the sunrise. Absolutely magnificent. It's so good, you can just eat it skin and all. Mmm, sweet, beautiful. It's like a lolly. A ground nut growing up this little cage here. This is something that I don't know a lot about. It's something new, a climbing plant 
with edible tubers, full sun, fertile well-drained soil. Well, I've done all that. Ground nut. Let's see how that turns out. It's growing well. Give it another few months. Hopefully into our spring, we'll be able to harvest that and have a sample. The pomelo, the biggest citrus in the world. This is a red variety. Well, obviously not the outside, the inside. And I tell you what, it tastes awesome. Sorrel. If you grow sorrel, especially in the subtropics, you won't be sorry. Because I tell you what, this grows all year round here. It does its best coming into winter, but what a amazing salad crop it is to have this strong plant growing all the time, all year round, no matter if it's hot, cold, or what. A tangelo. Oh, what a good fellow. This is a really odd cross variety of a mandarin, orange, and tangerine, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. But I tell you what, I'm really impressed. It's a young tree and it is very, very sweet and flavor, flavor, flavorful. Mmm, yeah. Look at the flesh on it. Fighting the pumpkin on this gourd trellis is this bitter gourd. It's very bitter and I'm not that fond of it. I've tried it in so many different ways. I know my Asian friends are saying, Mark, give it a go, try it this way, that. I just can't get the bitterness out of it. I'm sorry, but well, it grows like a weed here. I'll keep persisting with it. Check out this old chestnut, eh? It's actually a Malabar chestnut and it produces these big pods that are full of large seeds or nuts that you can roast or ground into a flour. You can eat them raw or cooked. And I'm looking forward to our first harvest of these things. We've got about three or four pods and I'm excited to try it. A native round lime. It's a small tree, it's a young tree at the moment and it doesn't get a lot of light, but it is a rainforest plant. This is a round variety. There's plenty of different types and I absolutely love them. This is the next big thing coming even international because of the unique fruit inside. This produces a caviar like fruit. If you squeeze it out, you see it pop and juice and come out. Little balls of freshness. I'm having another go at growing figs. Previously, I grew fig trees in our orchard and they got shaded out too much and they don't like the shade even though they're a very hardy plant. So now I've mounted them up and I've grown them where they get more sunlight. It looks like it's working, but these trees are only very small. This is a brown turkey fig, I believe. You can get Janala and different types. And I intend to grow some in containers also. There's another one behind me. Yeah, they're towards the end of the season. So they fruit and then they die back. But for only being in there for around under 12 months, they've done a pretty good job fruiting in the first season of planting. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it 50 thumbs up, one for each variety that I showed you. Well, you probably can't give it 50 thumbs up. One will do, that'll be great. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and also share the video around because that helps my channel out heaps. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.